Hello class and welcome to Math Minutes. This is video lesson number 22. Go ahead and get your notebooks out, turn to page 31, and we're going to start looking at how to graph points by plotting intercepts. So if you take a look at page 31, the intercepts on a coordinate plane are the places where, uh, where a line intersects or crosses either the x-axis or the y-axis. So here's a fun fact to remember. At the x-intercept, y is always 0, and the opposite is true for the y-intercept. At the y-intercept, x is always 0. So the way to graph a line by finding the intercepts is similar to graphing by plotting points, except the values that you will choose in your XY table will be zero. For example, finding the intercepts of the equation 2X minus 4Y equals 12 would require making the XY table with values for X and Y being zero, it looks like this. This table is exactly what we did in an earlier uh, lesson, but now we're choosing specifically zero for our points. We're gonna solve this equation two times. We're gonna first substitute x to be zero, and it will look like this. Instead of two x minus four y, we have two times zero minus four y. Two times zero is zero. We end up with negative four y equals 12, what do we do? The opposite to unstick that negative 4 and the y is to divide by negative 4. So here we have that step. 12 divided by negative 4, y equals negative 3. So when x is 0, our input, our output is our answer, y is negative 3. Now all we have to do is the same thing, but instead of substituting uh, 0 into x, we're going to substitute 0 for where the y is located in our equation. That looks like this one. 2x minus 4 times 0 equals 12. Well, anything times 0 is 0. That leaves us with 2x equals 12. To unstick that 2 and the x, remember they're being multiplied, we need to undo them, so we're going to divide by 2. Golden rule, we've got to do it to both sides of the equation. So we end up with x equals 12 divided by 2, and we simplify that to come up with x equals 6. So when y is 0, x is going to be 6. So the two points to plot are 0, negative 3, and 6, 0. These points are going to end up right on the x-axis and the y-axis. Let's turn to the next page and we'll do some practice problems together. Our first equation here is 3x plus 3y equals 18. We're going to do it twice. Our first equation here, we have 0 in the x position. Our second position, we have 0 in the y position. So let's just solve these. 3 times 0 is 0, plus 3y equals 18. I'm going to divide both sides by 3. That leaves me y. And 18 divided by 3, y equals 6. Now I can fill out my xy uh, table here, and I can now fill in the number 6 in that spot. Let's find our second coordinate. We end up with 3x plus 3 times 0 is 0. It just goes away equals 18. I'm going to divide each side by 3, and I'm going to end up with x equaling 6. Well, this ends up to be 6 also. They're not the same point, though, because our x's and y's have to be consistent. 0, 6 is a different coordination than 6, 0. Let's take a look at number 2. Our first equation is going to be 5y minus 3, but let's substitute 0 for x and that equals 45. We end up with 5y minus 0, it goes away, equals 45. What am I going to do? I'm going to divide by 5. That cancels. I divide this by 5. I end up with y equals 9, because 45 divided by 5 is 9. And now I can fill that in, and I have a coordinate, 0, 9. Let's find our second coordinate. 
5 times 0, because this time we're substituting the y value in, minus 3x equals 45. Well, 5 times 0 is 0. I end up with negative 3x. Let me point out, a common mistake that uh, you might be tempted to make is to just make this 3x. But you have to remember that that minus sign, or the negative, has to stay with the term. So we end up with negative 3x equals 45. And this will make a difference in our answer at the end. Because now, instead of dividing by 3, I'm going to divide by negative 3. Negative 3. So x equals 45 divided by 3 is 15. If we have a positive and a negative, those signs are opposite. So our rule is our answer is going to be negative. So x is negative 15. And we can add that over here, negative 15. Example number 3. 10 times 0, because I'm substituting my x in, minus 5y equals 5. Well, 10 times 0 is 0. I end up with negative 5y, remember to keep that negative sign with it, equals 5. Now when I divide by negative 5, negative 5, I end up with y equals, 5 divided by 5 is 1. Anytime a numerator and a denominator are the same in a fraction, it just equals the value of 1. But because I have a positive being divided by a negative, they're opposite signs, so my answer is going to be negative 1. Let's fill that in right there. Let's get our second coordinate. 10x minus 5 times 0, because now I'm substituting that 0 into the y, equals 5. 10x, and that just goes away, minus 0 equals 5. Now I'm going to divide by 10, and I'm going to divide this one by 10. x equals what? 5 tenths, we can reduce that down to 1 half. So in this case, when y is 0, x is going to be 1 half. And it's okay to have fractions in coordinates. Let's look at our last practice problem together, number 4. Let's substitute in our 0 for our x, minus y equals 9. 3 times 0 is 0, so we end up with negative y, do not overlook that negative sign, equals 9. Well, it kind of looks like we're done because we have y equals 9, but this is negative 9. So anytime we end up with a negative, we're going to just make the signs opposite of it throughout the entire problem by multiplying each side by negative 1. A negative times a negative gives us what? A positive. Well, now we have a positive y. That's awesome. But my golden rule says now I also have to take 9 and multiply that by negative 1. So my answer is going to be negative 9. And we just need one more coordinate. We need to now substitute 0 for our y in this equation. So now we have 3x minus nothing gives me 3x equals 9. I'm going to divide by 3. I'm going to divide by 3. x equals 9 divided by 3, which is 3 and there. Now we've gone through these equations kind of quickly. Remember you can pause the video at any time if you don't understand. You can re-watch it. Of course we'll always be working on these in class and on your math excel problems. Bring your completed notebooks to class and I'll see you next class.